how to fix a motherboard with a damaged socket the easy way or more importantly a few extra tips which i find you do not get in most intro tutorials which i had to discover by myself in many years of fixing broken hardware for a living. So welcome back at watching PSUs and let's actually get started. Now before that I actually have a little segment from the sponsor of today's video so see you guys in 30 seconds. Now every time you build a computer you're gonna need a Windows key and everyone on the internet is trying to sell you overpriced keys just because they get paid to do so. So here I am today with the cheapest keys I could find. From now on I'm only using keys fan because you can buy a Windows 10 Pro key which is also gonna work on Windows 11 for just nine bucks. It doesn't get cheaper than that. It's the cheapest one on the market. You can use code PSU50 for Windows keys and PSU62 for 62% discounts on office keys. Link is down below. Let's get back to the video. Now back on topic with the video. A damaged socket is one of the most common issues with damaged motherboards. It's actually two main issues. It's either a damaged socket or a corrupted BIOS. If you can fix these two, I would say you could even start buying batches of broken motherboards if you buy them from the right source where you know they haven't already attempted the repair on the motherboard and you can actually get around a third of the motherboard you buy fixed, which is a pretty high percentage rate and will actually allow you to turn a profit if that's what you want in repairing broken hardware because if you have a damaged socket you can fix it and if it still doesn't work generally you fix the BIOS and then the motherboard will be back on track again. Now the BIOS fixing thing is actually very long so if you guys want me to make a video about that maybe drop a comment down below and I can definitely do it but it's gonna be a very long video whereas this is supposed to be very short. So let's get on it. First off if you have broken pins meaning a pin is missing you can't fix it but if you have one or two broken pins and a lot of bent pins, it is still worth it to try and fix the motherboard because very often the motherboard will work even with a few broken pins because a lot of pins are just power pins or they control, for example, dual channel or one PCI slot. So you're gonna lose a PCI slot or lose dual channel but still get functioning motherboard which you can still use. Uh, of course, you cannot resell it without telling people the problems. But if you do tell people that it's a uh, damaged but now fixed motherboard you can still sell it for a pretty large profit because uh, broken motherboards sometimes sell for very cheap especially rare motherboards or most expensive motherboards like an asus rog apex motherboard if you fix that you're gonna get pretty large profit so what we have here is an am5 motherboard because i find the socket is a little different the pins are a little different and most tutorials on the internet will be based on Intel motherboards. So today we're trying something a bit different. Of course, the procedure is going to be the same for Intel. And these are tricks which I actually learned on Intel. The only difference here is I find pins are a little bit softer. So it's actually easier generally to fix them, but it's also easier to break them. So it's important to do it right. So what are you going to need is actually three things, okay, to do this professionally. You're going to need a very good needle. And by very good, I mean very small needle, the smallest you can find. Uh, while still actually getting a bit of lever. You don't want a needle that's too small. Uh, my best advice would be to buy maybe five or six different sizes so you can just change them around depending on which pin you're working on. If it's near the corner, generally you want a bigger needle. If it is inside the socket in the center, you generally want a smaller needle. Definitely do not start just uh, going with this over the pins randomly. There are three things you want to do. So first of all, we want to differentiate if a pin is just slightly bent or if it is actually curved inside. If you have a curved pin, you generally want to use the first trick from today's video, and that is heat. So what I have here is a heat gun. This is a very cheap heat gun. It's a heat gun you can buy for 30 bucks on Amazon. And I bought this close to 10 years ago and it's still going strong. I can do reflows with this and I use this to fix motherboards. So how you do it is you set to about half the power it can do. So it goes from zero to nine and I set it on five. And then I just uh, aim it at the socket and go around in circular motions for around 30 seconds at around five centimeters of distance. After doing that, you will find your pins are gonna be a lot softer and you're gonna have a lot less chance of damaging them. Because since they are softer and the part that's gonna heat up the most is the suspended part, not the attachment to the motherboard, you're gonna find it's gonna be a lot easier to actually bend this thing back. So that's the first thing. Second thing you want to do, and this is no matter how the pin is, so it can either be a little bent or it can be curved, you want some light. 
Now, how you do want the light is very specific. So this one is a screwdriver with a light on it, but you can use just your phone light, no problem. And uh, what you want to do is, let's say this is your socket and you're working from this side. So for example, this is the table. I have the motherboard here. The socket is towards me. I want to put the light opposite to me. So I want to put the light like this. This is gonna show me the imperfections of the socket because I don't want to move the pin around in the wrong direction. You only want to bring it back to where it should be. You don't want to push it further than it should be because then the metal starts to lose its shape and it's gonna be basically impossible to straighten it properly and you're gonna end up with an unfixable motherboard, okay? Once you have this setup going on, you can actually work on the motherboard. And what you want to do is, if the pin is bent, you want to do a continuous movement to straighten it. And then we can bring it to position. But first we want to straighten it with one single, uh, basically hooking movement. If the pin is actually straight, but it's not in position, we do not want to do a single movement. We actually want to go and do this. This in tiny fractions at a time. And you want to slowly bring it to line. Now, you don't want to bring it exactly to where it should be in one go, because here is the next thing you should do. You need to rotate the motherboard by keeping the light in place, you in place. So I'm here, the light is here, here is the motherboard. I want to rotate the motherboard a few times, okay, all the way. Because sometimes while you are straightening the pin, you're gonna bend it to the side a little bit. And you want to catch it by rotating the motherboard. Because again, if you go over in the other direction to where you're supposed to go, you're gonna damage the pins and lose its properties. So you want to very slowly bring it closer to the line of the other pins. And then before making the final adjustment, you want to rotate the motherboard and adjust it in the other directions first. And then once it's lined up with every single line, you want to bring it to the final tick. Now this is very easy because as you can see, square of socket is made of many lines. So you can compare it to the other lines and it has to match both the line horizontally on the X axis, let's say mathematically, but also on the Y axis, okay? It has to match and be straight in both times. And if you're following those tips, it's going to be super easy to get it on point. Now, once it is actually from an aesthetic point of view there, it doesn't have to be perfect, okay? Because since we bent the pins to begin with, the light is gonna shed differently on the pins still. So I recommend you only wash the top of the pin. Don't wash the, the center because the center is gonna shine a bit different either way. Make sure the top lines up perfectly in both directions. At that point, you want to do what I call the finger test. Now that's very scary to most people. You need to do it with no gloves and you need to do it on top of the socket. Basically you grab the actual socket, grab your finger. Okay, first of all, get comfortable with touching the socket. You can try it on where the pins are not bent. You can do this, no problem. You touching the socket is not gonna bend anything. You can also scrub your finger on it. You're not gonna get cut and it's not gonna damage the socket. So once you're confident in doing this, you want to bring it over the bent pins. And if it is straightened properly, you won't feel anything. Our fingers are super sensitive. If it is not at the right place, you will feel it with your finger. It may be a little taller. If it is a little taller, that's the worst case scenario. If it is lined up perfectly, but a little taller, because this is not gonna work. Okay, so what you need to do is grab your needle again, and you need to push with the tip of the needle. You want to push the middle of the pin in the opposite direction. So. I'm gonna demonstrate to you with my fingers, hoping it's easy. It's very hard to explain this without a microscope, but basically let's say my finger is here and the normal pin is like this, okay? This is the average position of the pin. So if my pin is too straight, it's gonna be taller than the other pins. So what I want to do with my needle is I want to push it right here in the middle. So it bends a little and now it's even. Then I want to tick, tick, tick and push this one in the right place. And you need to do this with trial and error until when you pass your finger on it, you don't feel anything. If it passes the finger test, your motherboard is fixed, like brand new, it's gonna work all the time. And now it was very difficult to explain all these steps because a lot of those things I do, but this is the first time I put them, like trying to explain it to someone, you to you guys. So if you do have any other tips of your own, please drop a comment down below because I'm always looking forward to improving my game of fixing hardware or if this video was helpful please drop a like and subscribe let me know if you like this kind of uh, fixing videos and if you guys want the bios one i can definitely do it for you and with that said see you guys in the next one bye bye